You've probably been hearing and seeing these words a lot in the news right now, war and conflict. It's pretty easy to use those terms to describe not only the current Israeli assault on Gaza, but even what is popularly referred to as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But how useful and accurate are terms like war and conflict in describing what is happening right now and what has happened over 75 years? Welcome to the Occupation Style Guide, a series that looks at how we talk about the things we talk about and the words we use. Israel-Hamas war, Israel-Gaza war, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, these roll off the tongue easily. But the words war and conflict, especially as they're used in the context of the Israeli occupation and current assault on Gaza, end up obscuring two main things. The context of violence and the reality of violence. Here's the Associated Press style guide specifying why they use the term war to describe the current Israeli assault on Gaza. According to the AP, the decision was made because of, quote, the high number of casualties, the mobilization of armies, the organized cross-border fighting and bombardments, and Israel's declaration of war and announcement that Gaza will be under siege. Most newsrooms have followed AP's lead and have been referring to the current assault as a war between Israel and Hamas or Israel and Gaza, a characterization we aren't using here at AJ+. The problem isn't necessarily with the use of war, but how it's been used. Israel-Hamas war, even by AP's own breakdown of considerations, and even the term conflict, equates unequal parties in a situation where there is a recognized occupier and recognized occupied. The terms as they've been used also insinuate a situation of violence between sovereign countries with established borders and militaries. And this is not the case with the occupied Palestinian territories and Israel. There is, of course, nothing equal between Palestinians and Israelis in their capacities for violence. Israel declared war on October 7th following the surprise attack by Palestinian groups that killed 1,200 Israeli civilians and soldiers. Since then, over 11,000 Palestinians have been killed, almost all civilians, and according to the Israeli military, only 47 Israeli soldiers have been killed. There is a truth about who is doing what to whom in that disparity. And frankly, even saying the war between Gaza and Israel is wrong because Gaza is not a standalone entity, it's part of the occupied territory. Israel is an occupying power. It is a country with a military and air force with billions of dollars in military aid. It is the only country in the region with nuclear weapons. It has been occupying, displacing, incarcerating Palestinians since 1948, stealing Palestinian land since 1948. Hamas? Hamas is not a military, it is a political movement with an armed wing born through and within the context of 75 years of violent occupation. And Gaza, governed by Hamas, is not a country and doesn't actually have defined borders. Israel maintains direct control over all of Gaza's land entries, exits, and airspace. It also controls its supply of water, energy, and other basic necessities. Most of its population, about 70%, are refugees from 1948 and their descendants. So terms like Israeli-Hamas war and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict obscure the reality of violence on the ground. Again, thousands of Palestinians have been killed. Schools and neighborhoods have been leveled. There is little water, little food, and limited electricity in Gaza. There's also nowhere to escape. Everything is controlled by the occupying power, Israel. So calling it a war between a state power and the people it occupies is inaccurate. A more accurate way of using the term war is in the way we use it here at AJ+, the Israeli war on Gaza. It is a framing that explicitly defines the situation as what it is, military power exerting an incredible breadth of violence on a civilian population. It's necessary, even if it's hard, to move away from the characterization of 75 years of violence as the, quote, Israeli-Palestinian conflict and toward the Israeli occupation, which squarely puts the responsibility on the occupying state power, as the occupation remains the source of all violence. But ultimately, the question we need to be asking and answering is what is the most accurate word for a situation in which a community of refugees are 
trapped on a strip of land with no escape, controlled by an occupying power whose leaders have called them human animals, and are indiscriminately bombed while denied food, water, and electricity.